question is from Nanduff61. How often should you take diet breaks and how long should they last? Okay, so if you're doing everything right, then there isn't a break. And it's, there isn't a diet. There isn't a diet. Yeah, right. there isn't a diet either. Yeah. It's just eating. It's like it's, that. It's eating. It's eating. It's, it's like the scene is. from uh, <laughs> the scene from the Matrix. You know, when when, he, when Neo's waiting in the waiting room for the, the Oracle for yeah, the first oh, one. The spoon. Yeah, 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 and the kid's bending the spoon with his mind, the little bald kid or whatever. Yeah. And, and, and Neo's like, oh, you know, how do you do that? He's like, I can't do it. He goes. The key is to realize there is no there spoon. There is no spoon. So, oh, yeah. yeah. That's really the key to proper eating is to realize <laughs> that is. you're not on a diet. Yeah. You know, it's just how you eat. And what does that mean? That means that sometimes yeah. you're going to go to a birthday party or you're going to enjoy yourself with your spouse and you're going to eat food for the sake of its hedonistic value. Because, yes, that is a value for the sake of the enjoying it. So sometimes, you know, we just came back from a, a trip with we all had our families together and you know, there were a couple meals that we ate and we drank, and the entire value of that meal was hanging out with you guys and the hedonistic value yeah, of, of we were, fun. Of when, we were, when we were at the slope snowboarding, we were we all had uh, you know carne asada tacos beers. and chips and guac and beers, like because that sounded amazing after riding and burning three thousand calories. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying like, to, and I'm going to enjoy that at that time uh, and not worry about it. And I, I'm not taking a break from the diet. It's just. Um, and, that is part of your diet, right? And and I think I think how I I try and help somebody who asks questions like this too is to understand that doesn't mean too that I, I I'm giving you carte blanche to go do whatever the fuck you want, just eat. Well, every time you want bad food, you eat bad yeah. food, mm -hmm. or whatever. Every time, or and now that I said you can have chips and yeah. guac and beer, you go have chips and guac and beer all the time. There's there's moments where I make the decision that then there'll be you know three days before that where I'll come home from work. And it's been a day where I've been at my desk all day long. I didn't get my workout and this, that. And Katrina goes like, hey, I'm, I'm craving uh, five guys tonight. Do you want some? And I'm like, oh, man, that sounds so good. But no. And I go, no, because I know I didn't move all day long. I didn't get my workout in. Yeah, the, it sounds good right now because I haven't eaten much. And a burger always sounds mm -hmm. pretty damn good. But I also know that I'm also – it's not a major sacrifice to pass on it. And you know what? I'll have – you know, some taco salad tonight instead, or I'm going to have the chicken breast that's in the in, in the refrigerator from yesterday instead. And it's not like I'm fucking sacrificing a lot right there. No. But if I if I feel like it's always on or off all the time, then you're playing this this game that you can or you can't. It's not that you can the, or you can't. It's just no, I don't want to do that the, right now. The root of the problem with it is not realizing the total value of food. So I'm going to give you two scenarios, both unhealthy. Scenario one is the nutrition freak, the fanatic. The only value they see in food is the macronutrients, like proteins, fats, carbs, the calories, and how it fuels their body. Now, why is that unhealthy? They have, any, they have an unhealthy relationship with food. They can't enjoy themselves with their friends. They probably have you know, missed lots of opportunities to develop relationships. They never enjoy food for the moment, for the pleasure of it. I've worked with a lot of these people. You see a lot of them in the hardcore fitness space. They're dysfunctional with their eating because they only see food for its but its its nutritional value. Now, on the flip side, which is most people, because that's not a lot of people, but they they exist. On the other side, you have the other people who only see food for its hedonistic its value. Yeah. Yes, all the value of food is how it tastes and how enjoyable it is. That's and if you and you know this because you when they decide what they're going to eat, that's what they base their decision off of. What do you want to eat? Let me think about it. Oh, I feel like Mexican, or I feel, and it's all based off of. It's hedonistic value, how, oh my God, the taste of it, the smell, the enjoyment. Now that is a value, just like the nutritional values of food are also a value. But if you worship one and you don't understand the others, you have dysfunction. What you really need to do is understand the total value. So in the example that Adam, that you gave, it's like you came home and Katrina says, let's get five guys. And you recognize the hedonistic value. Oh yeah, that does sound like it's going to taste good. But then you realize... The other value, the nutritional value, and at that moment, it's more important to you. That's how you develop balance. This is why you won't need a diet break because this is the internal dialogue that you have with yourself when you're deciding what to eat. What is more valuable to me at this moment? Right now, I'm with Adam, Justin, Doug, and our families. We're up in Lake Tahoe. We're at a ski lift. We haven't hung out together that you know in a way that wasn't business related. And right now, what I value is I want to enjoy this beer. I want to talk to my friends. I want to have this carne asada taco and have a lot of fun. Most of the time, that's not the case because most of the time I'm just feeding myself, and so I'm going to value 
the nutritional stuff for food. But if you have that approach, then you don't have a diet break. Because here's what a diet break encourages. It encourages you to go on your diet and off your diet, Mm -hmm. which looks like restrict and binge. That's exactly what it looks like. It's like, right now I'm on a break. What is a break? Anytime you take a break, what does a break look like? I'm going the opposite direction, everybody. Right. I'm on a break. I'm going to eat everything I want. I'm going to go crazy with the cake and the, and the alcohol, and then I'm going to go nuts. And then, uh-oh, got to get back on the diet. What does that look like? Perfection. It looks like restriction and perfection, and we all know how that, that relationship and it, works out. It takes a lot of extra calories just to put one pound of body fat on mm. So it's, you know, you, you may be thinking right now, like, you know, we, the, the two Coronas I had and the four carne asada tacos, that's what, maybe a thousand calories, you know, maybe or so that's not even enough to put one pound of body fat, especially considering that I'm going to be riding and moving around Mm -hmm. like crazy. It's, it's the compounding effect and the spiraling down that ends up happening to people when they, when they get on and off. And that's what that relationship promotes the, I can or can't have, or I'm on a diet break. That diet break now turns into a, I'm going to eat whatever I want because I'm on a break. And then now it, it goes from the thousand calorie lunch that I'm enjoying with my friends because I'm on a ski lift to the every day, every meal for the next five days, I'm over consuming. And now I've over consumed 7,000 calories. Here comes the two pounds that I added. It's mm-hmm. just too neurotic. I mean, like people just need to relax. Like it, like all, like for me, it's about seeking foods that I know like the nutrients of it I need and I want to like get foods that make me feel good and, and, and help to promote uh you know like better movement and, and and keep me active and and healthy like foods that make me healthy now there's going to be times where it's not available or whatever I don't want to sweat about that and like hammer myself about that the more you hammer yourself about it the more again you, you get into that that like okay well I'm going to go off the rails and then it just becomes more of this accelerated thing oh, where it's like I, I've known lots of people punishment. I've known lots of people in our space who are fanatics about their nutrition and exercise but it's such a stressful way to live and that it's in the fact that they don't have lots of deep relationships. The only relationships they have are with other fanatics. Yeah. They don't like to go out with friends. They don't like to go to parties. They don't like to connect with people or they judge people for not being as fanatical as they are. And so what they end up doing is harming their health because stress, relationships, documented. This is documented. Scientific studies have shown that those things are as important to your health as your diet. So it's like you're going to take one and completely destroy the other one. You just traded one for the other. So you might as well eat bad and have good relationships. It's not that big of a difference. So it's it's really about, look, if you want to navigate in a modern, prosperous world where you have access to all these foods all the time, because I mean, let's be honest, for most of human history, we're kind of forced to eat healthy because that's all that was available. You know, you didn't, when you're a caveman, you're not walking by a McDonald's or, or Chinese food. It's like, what do we have to eat? I don't know. Go kill that or pick that thing over there. And that's what you, what you can eat. So we live in a very prosperous world. The only way you're going to navigate it right is to have that type of relationship with food. Otherwise, you're screwed. You are screwed and you're going to go on and off and you're going to have breaks mm-hmm. and you're going to get on the wagon and now I'm serious and oh, now I'm off and it's just going to end up with poor relationship and poor health. Yeah, get rid uh, of the wagon. In the long term. 